Here's your blue wall blitz, Ms. Perino. All blue right. Wall. <clears throat> If she takes the blue wall and that one electoral vote in Nebraska, she'll get to 270. That's why she's doing it. Milwaukee today, uh, areas of Detroit today, and also Philadelphia in the southeast corner today, all for Kamala Harris. Put all the polls together right now, super close. <laughs> this is, you know, Pennsylvania trumps up 0.8 percentage points, right? Michigan trumps up about 1.2 percentage points. Wisconsin, uh, it's less than one point uh, between the two. Really, really close. Historically, this is something else, right? What was the old commercial? Ask Mikey because he likes it, all, all that stuff, right? Remember that? Okay, this is Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Going back to 1992, all three states voted for the same candidate all three times. And only one time was it a Republican, and that was Trump in 2016. Now you understand how the blue wall, tuck that sucker in there, how the blue wall got to become the blue wall, right? Here it is. This is Michigan in 2020, Biden less than three points, super close in Michigan. This is PA in 2020, right? Biden 1.2 points. I mean, Michigan's looking like a blowout right now. Uh, and this is Wisconsin from 2020, 0. 0.6 points for Biden. Again, all three, three for three, going back to 1992, the vote is a block. Let's swing on over here, and we'll bring in our next guest to give us our best analysis coming our way. Hey, um, I love having Kaylee McEnany on a Monday. She's a co-host of Outnumbered, and I may be able to have to make you permanent Monday status here because it. you help us kick off the week. Um, we know that Harris has no current plans to campaign with Biden, but I think that makes sense. It makes total sense. Yeah. CNN said that one of her most popular moments in the debate, according to internal polling, was when she said, clearly, I am not Joe Biden. Mm. We've all seen the data. We all saw NBC last week where 25 percent say Biden's policies have helped them. Forty four percent said that about Trump. The data is clear. You must separate yourself. But she's apparently very loyal. That's what they've been backgrounding to reporters. The thing is, your loyalty might cause you a cross-country trip back to California, a move back in January, if you keep that loyalty. Right. Speaking <laughs> of California, here's the governor, Gavin Newsom, about how it's how you can't do it. She tried to tell Peter Alexander this mm -hmm. on Friday when she when she was in Michigan, because she had that comment about, you know, even Mike Pence was loyal to, to yeah. Donald Trump. It's hard to get a separation between the two. Here's Newsom making a point in a different way now. She sees the world with her own set of eyes, her own unique experience, her own journey. By definition, she's a change candidate. She's a generational candidate in that respect. She's also the vice president of the United States. And I think it's an almost impossible position to be in. If she separates too much, it becomes then the new narrative where we zig and zag to that narrative uh, and not to what she wants to focus on. I think a lot of what he says is right. Yes. Do you think she's going to zig and zag successfully? This He has a point. And look, I thought her answer to Peter Alexander was her best answer yet on the topic. It is right. She said it's not helpful to the relationship between a president and a vice president to have right. this separation. And then she went on to say, I'd prioritize housing and Medicare in a different way. That's a really good answer. But why didn't you do that the first time and the second time? Why has it taken this long to get to that answer, which I think is the honest one? Mm -hmm. And I also think that in a way, this. Can I, if I may say, the burden is not necessarily hers, mm -hmm. right? So Biden, when he said, this is my decision, even if it wasn't, and I'm going to do this, and he should have given her permission to say, you can distance from me. I'm not going to, my feelings are not going to be hurt. I know you're a loyal person, but that didn't happen. But speaking of the switcheroo, apparently Nancy Pelosi is not happy. <laughs> There's a new book by Jonathan Alter called American Reckoning. And she says she's not happy that the only bloody fingerprints on the knife were hers when it came to getting Biden out. And that Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and other Democratic leadership were in on it, but they didn't take any of the hits. That's 100% correct. So when you go back and look at how this saga played out, there was a July 5th comment by Nancy Pelosi saying it's a legitimate question to ask whether Biden had an episode or a condition. Then you go to July 10th, and she's out on Morning Joe, and she has that famous comment where she says, we're all waiting on Biden to make his decision after he had already made his decision to stay in the race. Jake Sherman says that was like a bomb that went off and gave permission for Democrats to distance themselves from Biden. Then Schiff comes out, and all of this happens, and it isn't until July 18th that we get one signal that Obama's not on board via a story in The Washington Post that that popped during the RNC. It was Nancy Pelosi leading the way. And she has a point. Where was Obama and Schumer? They were very late to the game. She's not afraid. No, she's not. And she's a queen maker. I always thought that Obama waited a week because he didn't want to have his fingerprints on the gun. 
Yeah. I thought that was his strategy. Well, also, they right. might have wanted, I, mean, I, I, I think also they thought that perhaps having a mini primary was better than the situation they have now. I think at the yes. time, many of them did feel that way. I think this is still the best political story that's yet to be written oh, in the yeah. United it, States. Absolutely. And interestingly, right. that book says yeah. if they would not have floated the idea of a mini primary, a lot of Dems wouldn't have gotten on board if they would have known it was Kamala. Yeah. So a lot of interesting drama. Yeah, we'll see you at noon. Uh, early in-person voting is on in a big way in Georgia and now North Carolina. Mm -hmm. and a lot of folks are voting. And so we're going to read the tea leaves by the day. See you at noon. Great okay? to have you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.